Welcome to our channel, listen to my story. Please, like, share and subscribe. I don't believe in ghosts, evil spirits, haunted houses, metaphysics, etc. I only believe in science and facts. But sometimes things happen that shred all your beliefs. I want to introduce myself. I'm Lisa. I'm 14 years old. I live with my mom, dad and grandmother. And they're all very proud of me. I'm the leader of the science club at school. And I've been the perfect student for the past two years. My hobbies are reading, watching educational videos, and learning. I like to discuss matters with rational people, not those who believe in myths, aliens, ghosts, and other such nonsense. I personally think these people have mental issues. One morning, my grandmother passed away. I was sad for a long time because I missed her so much. On the day of her funeral, the whole city must have come to say goodbye. While the priests were praying, I noticed something peculiar about one of the graves in the graveyard. After the prayer ended, I approached the grave in question, to investigate. There was some weird writing on it. Then, a wispy, transparent, smoky figure appeared out of nowhere. It said to me, Do not get closer to Donna Median's grave. Beware. I shivered slightly and asked the apparition who Donna was. And it replied, Who was she? She was an evil witch, who liked to scare people. She was burned at the stake as a witch, but before her death she swore a curse that if anyone ever approached her grave, her ghost would haunt that person to the day they die. I did not laugh at the apparition's warning. Instead, I turned and returned home, thinking about what had happened. On a sudden defiant impulse, I decided to visit that grave, that night, to see for myself if the curse was real. I took my dad's flashlight and wore a raincoat. It was pitch black outside. The place was horribly unsettling at night, but I wasn't worried at all. It's not like it was real, right? I entered the gate to the sound of howling dogs and meowing cats. My blood ran cold, and a sudden chill ran through me. I turned on the flashlight and began searching for the grave. My hands were trembling so badly I dropped the flashlight several times. Sometimes I would step on something crunchy, and I would shine the light downward, only to see that I had stepped on an insect. Sometimes I'd see a cat here and there. Then suddenly, I heard an eerie sound close by. I froze, not daring to move. Slowly, I pointed my light towards the sound, and gasped, as my light illuminated a dark, shadowy figure. It was about my height, and dressed all in black. I spun around and fled, as rapidly as my faithful feet could carry me. I dove into bed, but I didn't sleep at all that night. I even left the lights on. The next day, when I woke up, I asked my dad if graveyards had ghosts, and he wondered why I would ask such a question. I was embarrassed and laughed to hide my fear. I told him that I was just curious. That was all. Dad looked at me suspiciously, but continued. I've heard stories, he said that some people have seen a ghost of a girl from time to time beside Donna Median's grave. I felt my heart sink, and I asked slowly, Is she about my height and dressed in black? He replied, Yes, that's how I've heard the ghost described. How in the world did you know that? I looked down casually and answered, Oh, I read an article about it on the internet last night. My head hurt just thinking about this ghost thing. I made up my mind to prove or disprove it once and for all. I called my friend Laura and persuaded her to come with me to the grave. The following night, we met at the stroke of midnight, at the entrance to the graveyard. Laura was shaking and constantly casting glances right and left. The weather was rainy and gloomy. The ground was muddy and cats were meowing everywhere. It would have made the perfect setting for a supernatural horror movie. While we were looking for Donna's grave, flying bats would occasionally startle Laura, causing her to scream alarmed. As we approached Donna's grave, we suddenly heard a sound behind us. We both turned around at the same time and screamed. A ghost was glaring at us. It asked angrily, What are you doing beside my grandmother's grave? Wait a minute. Are you girls? She uncovered her face, revealing that she was just a girl, and a beautiful one at that. She told us that her name was Carmen, and asked me to turn off the flashlight, because it hurt her eyes. I did. Then I asked, Who are you? 
she replied. I'm the fifth grandchild of Donna Median, the poor woman in this grave, who has been wrongly accused. We both whispered back, Wrongly accused? She continued saying, Yes, she was a victim of the Holocaust during World War II. Afterwards, she became a simple doctor who treated people who were afflicted with epilepsy. As usual, there are always some small-minded superstitious people looking to make trouble for others. They accused her of being a witch because they considered epilepsy to be a disease caused by a demon's touch. I come here every day to put flowers on her grave. People have mistaken me for a ghost because I only come at night. I don't want people to know I'm related to someone they think to be a witch. I don't want to be shunned, scorned, or gossiped about. I tried to comfort her and calm her a little by saying, Don't worry, Carmen. Your grandmother's spirit may be able to rest in peace if you tell people the truth now. We live in more modern times, and when there's no need to worry, I won't tell anyone about you being the ghost. It'll be our little secret. Carmen laughed. She and I became good friends after that. Ever since that day, whenever I hear someone talking about ghosts, I just look at the photo I took of Carmen and I, and I break out laughing. I have been cursed, and it will haunt me for the rest of my life. It all began with a joke at first, but some jokes have serious consequences, and when this happens, your life becomes an uphill struggle. My name is Catherine. I am 16 years old, and I live with my parents and my little sister Mara. I like music, acting, and watching action movies. I play baseball and practice ballet. I've even won a lot of prizes. I just had one problem. I like to make fun of people. It's like an addiction. I never watched what I said, nor did I care who it hurt. The kids I picked on were actually kind and gentle, but that just encouraged me even more. My friends were exactly like me. In fact, I was their leader. We walked like we owned the school. We had a classmate named Norman. He wasn't exactly what you'd call in good shape. He was quite the opposite of fit. During class breaks, my gang and I would steal his lunchbox and throw it around each other, keeping it away from him. We watched him run trying to catch us, but he'd stop halfway. The extra weight didn't help him, and he'd quickly run out of breath. Whenever he entered the classroom, we would surprise him by throwing old, musty vegetables and fruits at him. Norman tolerated our teasing. He didn't seem to mind much. But then, one day, a joke went a bit too far. We conceived an evil plan. We told him that there was going to be a photo contest, and the person who makes the funniest pose wins. Norman was so gullible that he believed us. He actually gave it some thought. Then he posed for us. We did our best not to burst out laughing while we took pictures for him. The next day, when he came to school, Norman discovered that his photo shoot pictures had been posted all over the classroom walls, and the kids were laughing, writing comments all over the place. Norman was mortified, and he looked around at his classmates' faces. They were all laughing and pointing at him. Norman started crying, and his nose started bleeding. Then he fainted. A teacher had to call an ambulance to take him to the hospital. I certainly didn't expect that to happen. We knew that Norman would get so fatigued sometimes and leave school for the rest of the day, but we didn't know that he had a medical condition, and I felt deep regret. The curse that I spoke of earlier began when a girl named Naomi joined our class as a new student. On her first day, our teacher brought her in and introduced her to us. She sat at the desk at the very last row. I noticed that she was always looking at me in a strange way, and I wondered why. She looked at me with disdain and I couldn't figure out why. It was my first time meeting her, after all. I avoided her, mainly because her looks made me feel uneasy, and whenever my gang wanted to make fun of her, I told them to leave her alone. I felt there was something about this girl. One day, during science class, the teacher had paired us up to do a lab experiment, and I intended to ask her about the way she looked at me, but before I could say anything, she took the initiative and surprised me by broaching the subject herself. You will pay for what you did to Norman, she said coldly. I looked at her and asked, How do you know Norman, and what are you talking about? She replied, It doesn't matter how I know. I just do. I spent the next few days thinking about her words. Afterwards, Naomi ignored me completely. No more staring, no more accusing looks. It was as if I no longer existed to her. I didn't understand her. Then came the day. We had a basketball match. It was the championship game, but I was still busy thinking about Naomi's words. 
During the game, I glanced at Naomi and caught her looking at me, which distracted me. One of the players from the other team suddenly bumped into me, knocking me down and causing me to land badly on one of my knees, the pain I was in. I had to withdraw from the game to be taken to the hospital. At the hospital, the doctor said that I had torn a ligament from my knee and told me that I would need a surgery and a lot of medication. So after going through the surgery, I began taking my medications. It caused me to gain weight, even though I wasn't eating very much, just vegetables and fruits. I asked the doctor about my sudden weight gain, and he told me the medications I was taking were affecting my hormonal balance, which rarely happened, but in my case, it did. He said that I would either have to endure great pain or deal with the overweight because it wasn't going to stop. So there you have it, guys. This is the curse that Naomi cast upon me, the price I had to pay for what I did to Norman. Eventually, I got well enough to take my final exams. When I arrived at school, all my friends took one look at me and started laughing. I was now their target, their prey. One of them said, You're as large as an elephant. I'll lose weight once I stop taking my medications, I retorted, but no one was listening. I am now living in a nightmare, and I would like to tell Norman that I'm very, very sorry for everything that I've done.